Begs, uh, the Lions third citizenship ceremony here at the Gabba. How special it will be, do you think, for the 49 new Australians to watch their first AFL game? Oh, I imagine they'll be excited. Um, hopefully they'll get swept up in the crowd. There's meant to be a good crowd here on, um, on Sunday afternoon, which is exciting. And um, hopefully they'll just look around and see people from lots of different nations at the ground. Uh, we see that at all of our venues each weekend. I think uh, the AFL's done wonders, wonders for that. And, uh, you know, hopefully in time we'll see more and more people from different nationalities actually playing our game and uh, becoming elite players. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, the whole thing's very exciting. Young Sudanese um, boy on the side on the sidelines for the, for the game, Deng. Um, yeah, Deng's been down at our club a bit um, the last uh, well, five or six weeks working with Ben Hudson. Uh, always got a big smile on his face, helps out at training. Uh, he's got a few good skills as well. Um, it's interesting, a lot of the African boys are now starting to play our game. So, uh, no, he's been a welcome addition and uh, very popular amongst the players. Is that the membership forming that citizenship as well? Playing for you? All comers, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The, we, we can't have too many members. It's good. I think we uh, struck the 28,000 this year, which is, uh, uh, I think that's uh, the third highest ever, and we haven't done that for a long, long time. So uh, uh, it's exciting to see people getting behind us. And as we say, people of all nations, we don't mind as long as you support the Lions. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably right. We certainly, uh, the four games that I've been coached of uh, the Lions, when we've played them, we haven't been able to, to beat them. Uh, you know, not that long ago they won an AFL Premiership. They seem to be uh, approaching that sort of form at the moment, so uh, uh, they're an opposition we have a high level of respect for. We had a, a really close game against them up at Ballarat earlier in the year where we felt like we wasted some opportunities in the first half. Uh, so we get another opportunity this weekend, uh, but you know they're fighting for a spot uh, in the top eight, and it's going to be a really tough game. We need to play at our very, very best. How much improvement have you seen in your team though since since that game, like, from where you were there to where you are now? Uh, it's hard to gauge because it's a bit of a week to week thing. I think generally overall we've definitely improved. Uh, we have a bit more confidence, a bit more belief. That was back in about round seven, round eight. Uh, we've got a few more wins under our belt now, um, but. You know, it's about how you turn up on the day. So in, to a degree, even though we have more belief, uh, it doesn't matter all that much. It's, it's what you bring on Sunday. You mentioned the Bulldog Premiership. There's been some, some people this week sort of liking your journey to the Bulldogs of 2016, a young side peaking late in the season. Do you see any similarities? Oh, I'll leave it to those people to make those comparisons. I don't even think about things like that. I just think about the next game. So uh, uh, we're on a good roll at the moment. Uh, you know, we've won six in a row. Uh, but another game beckons, so uh, that's all we concern ourselves with. Harris Andrews back, pretty handy bloke to be bringing back into a squad that's currently doing really well. Yeah, I thought Josh Walker did a good job last week, and it's a little hard for a guy like Josh to go out of the side on the back of a reasonably good performance. But Harris is one of the better key defenders in the AFL. Uh, we're happy to have him back. They've got a young forward by the name of Norton, who's a very, very good player, and uh, that battle will be excellent to watch. But he's probably one of the few guys that's actually done well against Harris this year, how do you think he'll, Harris will yeah. approach the um, They had an interesting battle at Ballarat because I think if you look at the first half, it's Harris nice. was well and truly on top in the second half, um, Aaron played really well. So uh, no, they're both competitive beasts, um, <coughs> we look forward, <coughs> excuse me, we look forward to that clash, yep. Um, Dane Zorko has had a cracking couple of weeks, he's been so influential, how have you seen his leadership and the way he's going at the moment? Oh, he's had a cracking year. Um, uh, his leadership is great because he leads by example. Um, he's particularly good at the defensive side of the game, uh, which is not always the most popular side of the game uh, amongst AFL players. They like getting the kick and winning the ball, but uh, defending is not always uh, a natural part of their game. But uh, he's, 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 he's the leading pressure player in the AFL, and it's, it's brilliant to have him as our captain for that reason. He's also such a highly enthusiastic bloke. Uh, he's an optimist. And uh, you know he, he brings everyone along with him. Is that why you gave Dane this new role rather than just purely hunting the footy? So if the captain's prepared to do it, everyone else is because he's, there's three or four Zorko clones in your side now that play want to play just like he does. Yeah, he's probably uh, morphed into that. I mean, it's just something we encourage in all of our players, and uh, I, I, th I think he's over the last couple of years developed a newfound respect for that part of the game and you're right what's happened is other guys have followed and uh, 
that's why that's why he's captain. But uh, he's uh, he's been brilliant at that part of the game and embrace it more importantly because it's it's one thing to talk about, it's another thing to actually get out there and do it. And he's he's led by his actions. So you've qualified for the finals now, coach. Yeah. Does it does it change you? Does it any change from qualifying for the finals to preparing for the finals? Not really. Um, we've been preparing to play finals from the moment we all started working together at the footy club. So uh, in a sense, we just keep doing what we're doing. We, uh, we had a chat to our players at the beginning of the week about the idea of we've got where we are because we've focused on improvement. So our next four weeks is about focusing on improvement. Uh, it does appear as if we've won enough games to make the finals, but they're not until four weeks' time. Uh, the opportunity now exists for us to finish as high up the ladder as we can. And so we're going back to the, this. We've got a four-week block now, and it starts this week, this game. That's all we care about, and then we'll move on to the next one after that. So you almost feel like it's a, re a reset of sorts, a new block? Uh, no, not necessarily. It's just a continuation of, of what we've been doing. But it, it probably needed a conversation just to make sure that we uh, were focused on that and not thinking about what's going to happen in six weeks' time. That's pretty much what that was about. Well, there's a couple of things you've never had to consider. <coughs> well, you've had to, but this footy club hasn't for a long time, and that's you're playing deeper into the year than ever before. Is there mm. discussions around um, maintaining energy levels and how you... I mean, you, these, you're going to ask these boys to play two or three or four more games of footy than they normally do. Yeah, um, oh, it's always a, a consideration for us. It has been in my two years here because we've had such a young group, so I've had to be careful about how hard we push them in the latter part of the year. And we've got a terrific uh, group of medical people and fitness people who look after that side of it. Um, we're really aware of where our players are at. We uh, monitor their energy levels on a regular basis and we give them breaks. Um, from, from training and meetings when we think we need it. So uh, we'll just continue on with that. Um, the, the, what comes from playing in finals is there's a bit of an excitement as well. So uh, it tends to be quite motivating. So that's, that's working the other way for us as well. There are two teams in the AFL that have to play five out of the last seven games in a row. You must be happy to be home for the next couple. Um, happy but wary. You know, it can easily be, oh yeah, we're home now, we're right, you know, we always win at the Gabba. That's not the attitude. You know, all of our games at the Gabba this year haven't been easy games, they've been tight games. And teams come up here and throw everything at us, and we expect that this weekend. So, uh, uh, it's not a, it's not a, an opportunity for us to take a rest, it's just another game we've got to play at our ground, which is a bit of an advantage, but it's only a little advantage, we have to bring the right effort. Blake, you, got, you got a win last week, but I heard you say after the game that it was probably Oh, oh no, not at all. I mean, we hung on in that game. Hawthorne had their chances in the first half, yeah. clearly. We were probably the better team in the second half. So what we took out of that is we're a resilient group. You know, we can we can come from behind, we can fight our way back into games. So that was the pleasing aspect of it, that we didn't get downhearted at half time because we weren't playing all that well. We actually came out in the second half and played better. So that's really encouraging. So it's not a, it's not a warning sign. It's actually really hard to win in Launceston. So I was just really pleased with the resilience and grit that our group showed. And it's an important quality to have as you, as you progress through the year, because not everything goes your way all the time. That, that ability to not get downhearted has been the mo most significant change, I think, about your side. And there's been games where you've been well down, yeah. and it just seems to be a belief that when you get your 10 minutes or 15 minutes of momentum, you can score quickly. Yeah, I think that's that's good observation. It's a it's a real uh, commitment amongst our our group that we've worked on for a, for a long time now to just to keep on keeping on, even when things aren't going your way, because things will turn. And I think the group have now got enough evidence that that's the way it works, that they can now do that and understand that they can get back into games. Uh, we had that in our very first game this year against um, West Coast up here. You know, we'll, we were, I don't know, 30-odd 30 points down at quarter time and managed to get up and win that game. So uh, the belief start, has started there and we've had a few instances like that this year where we've, uh, we've been able to do that. Mind you, as a coach, I'd rather we start well and not have to do that, but um, it's good to be able to come from, from behind as well. It's, it's something that good teams can do.